All right, guys, hope everyone is safe, everyone is well. We here in the U.S. have been ordered to shelter in place, just like a lot of other countries, uh, which means we can't go outside, we can't drive, we have to sort of stay inside. But how do you prepare your Tesla to shelter in place, to be still, to not be moving for a long period of time? Let's jump into it. All right, guys, we're talking about sheltering in place, being able to sit and leave your car, your Tesla specifically, sitting for a while and the things that you should do to prepare for that. Okay, so Teslas are like most cars in a lot of ways, but different in other ways. So here's a couple of tips to help you to understand what needs to happen in order for you to leave your car sitting for a prolonged period of time if you're not gonna drive it. Okay, so number one, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna basically set our charge limit to the appropriate limit. If you have your car, you should definitely keep it plugged up in case you have to go somewhere, when there is an opportunity to go somewhere, um, in case you have to evacuate the situation, whatever the case may be. You wanna have a level of preparedness with your car, but you don't want to overcharge your car and you don't want your car to sit for a long time with a high state of charge. So what we recommend and what Tesla recommends as well is that you set your limit down a little bit lower. So if you typically use the daily slider here and charge to about 90% or 80%, if you have a, a battery about 300 miles or more, you want to slide that down to about uh, maybe 75% or so uh, to be your daily limit. This allows the car to be topped up and ready to go, but doesn't uh, degrade your battery by keeping it at the upper limits of the battery threshold. If you have a smaller battery than a 100 kilowatt hour battery, it's probably recommended you can probably go to 85, 80, 85 in terms of your charge limit, but that's what you wanna set it to. You don't wanna to go to 90, you don't wanna to go to 100, because what's gonna happen is as the car sits, it's gonna degrade a little bit uh, with the battery uh, thermal management system, depending on where you live and the temperature, thermal management system for the battery, as well as other systems that it's checking on a frequently basis, especially if it's connected to the internet, so on and so forth. So definitely set your charge limit to a lower limit than your daily limit to keep the car ready to go. If you have two Teslas like us, you wanna basically fl fluctuate and say, hey, one car is gonna sit at you know 75%, not plugged in, the other one's gonna sit at 75% and plugged in, and maybe you'll alternate from day to day depending on how long you're gonna be sheltering in place. That's the first tip. The next thing you wanna do, if you have air suspension, what you wanna do is you wanna make sure that your suspension is set to a level of standard as opposed to high or low. Right now I have it in low, um, but what I'm gonna do uh, is basically turn the car on and change it to standard. And what this is, is it allows your air compressors to be at a level set. So now your air suspension doesn't run the risk of being at fault or braking because it's been low too long or because it's been high too long. Uh, so just put it on standard, leave it there for now. The car does that automatically itself over time. Like if you just uh, have it in low and then you park it and after a few uh, you know minutes or whatever, it may automatically raise up to standard. But just in case, go ahead and put it in standard. All right, the next thing you wanna do is you want to basically go over to uh, safety and security and you wanna turn off sentry mode. Uh, if you have the luxury of being parked in a garage, um, you wanna turn off sentry mode. If you have the luxury of being parked on private property where no one can easily access your car, you wanna turn off sentry mode. Obviously, if you're in an apartment or condo and you have, you know, your car's outside is exposed, we don't know what these times are going to, 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 to bode in terms of thieves and crime. Uh, so definitely keep it on if you're outside and your car is exposed. But if you're inside in the garage, turn off sentry mode, reduce the power load on your car so it's not draining the battery uh, very fast. But also it's not allowing you to be able to save clips of whatever may be happening in your garage, you know, leaves blowing, shadows, things like that that can trigger a sentry mode event. Again, that's going to be beneficial in the long term. Again, one week, two weeks, three weeks, a month, whatever the case may be. That's a very good practice. Again, if your car is not uh, exposed and vulnerable. If it's exposed and vulnerable, definitely keep it on uh, and monitor your power usage through your app, okay? You also wanna do something else. You wanna basically go in here in your, in your USB port here and remove your USB for your dash cam. Um, you can remove it or you can pause it here. Pause it by long pressing and pause. You'll see the icon change and now it's paused. So this is gonna stop the car from writing to your USB drive. That's one way to do it if you don't feel like removing it. I recommend removing your USB that you write to with your dash cam. It's gonna save the life of the, of the USB drive or SSD that you're using uh, from having to be written over and over again for whatever a sentry mode might pick up. 
So that's another best practice. And it also keeps uh, the energy usage low as well from not having to power or write to that particular USB drive. So again, sentry mode off, remove the USB or sentry mode off, pause the USB or just pause the USB as necessary. And if you're outside, definitely keep everything on and make sure your car is secure. All right, the next thing you wanna do, and this is more of just a best practice for how you deal with your car in general, is that you wanna check on your car every couple of days just to make sure that it's working um, and wake it up. Let it do a systems check and let it uh, let the screens turn on a little bit and let the system turn on, as opposed to going into what, what's known as a deep sleep when the car sits for too long. Um, so you can do that. Uh, if you let it go into the deep sleep, it's gonna take a little longer to boot up, both through the app or in person, or you can just walk by, open the door, let the screens come on, and then you have a situation where you've waken the car up uh, and now it's ready to, to, to do its thing. All right, let's jump into the X and let's check out what older cars should do in terms of everything I just said. Everything I said plus one more thing. All right, guys, I jumped over into the X. This is a 2017 X, a little bit older, and therefore we have some different components here. And the other thing that you want to consider here if you have an older car is this feature under display that says energy savings, right? So energy savings is here. It's a feature within the chipset for these cars that allows you to be able to keep energy saving on, but also choose when to connect. So one of the things I didn't mention in the other car that I'm gonna mention here is definitely keep your car connected to Wi-Fi, keep your Wi-Fi on. But then in these older cars, you wanna make sure that you can choose to have energy savings on or off. This will determine whether the car will go into the deep sleep or not. With the newer cars, it's automatic. You can't control it. It automatically goes into deep sleep over a certain period of time. But this is what this allows you to do. Uh, power savings and energy management on, things of that nature. So one of the things you wanna do in this sort of shelter in place mode uh, where you're letting your car sit for a long time is you wanna make sure you stay always connected. You can choose energy saving on or off but you have to always check, always connect it so that it stays connected, it can receive updates, and when you check it on your phone, it'll respond quicker as a result of that. Again, new cars, new chipset doesn't have this ability. It's, either, it's always deep sleep uh, or instant connection if it's not in deep sleep. This one, it says, gives you the ability to go to deep sleep or not, and then whether you wanna stay always connected or not. So this is another tip just to make sure that you understand that uh, the car will be sitting for a while, you wanna have access to it, you wanna be able to check on it, and if, for whatever reason, Tesla releases some emergency software update. Um, I don't expect them to release any fun new features during this time, knowing that people can't go out and knowing that if they release an update, it's going to encourage people to go out and test it out. So I expect them to only release any emergency related features on the car. So you want to make sure you have always connected to be able to get that. OK, so that's pretty much what you want to do outside of the normal things that you would do for cars in terms of checking tire pressure and all that good stuff. These are things specific to Tesla that you can do, especially if you just got a new car, a new Y, a new three, a new S or X, something you might not know about. So let me know in the comments, is there anything else that you do for long-term storage of your car? We'll talk again the next time. Stay safe. Hope everyone's family is safe. Um, and hopefully we'll see brighter days ahead until the next time. Enjoy your day. Enjoy your family. Uh, and soon you'll be able to enjoy your Tesla once again.